Assalamu alaikum dear viewers, welcome to Muharram Q&A uh, here on Wilayat TV. Um, you can follow us on Twitter and WhatsApp, you can see the details coming up on the screen right now. Uh, I'm your host, Mudafar Haider, and here in the studio today we have with us Sheikh Ali. Sheikh Ali, a warm Assalamu alaikum from me. Wa alaikum assalam wa In these days that we are grieving and mourning about Abdullah al-Hussein, um, we have a bit of a strange question today, Sheikh. And that question is, on the day of Ashura, who is it that remembered the Zuhur prayers and who is it that gave the Adhan? A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Al-Ain Al-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Well, according to historic narrations, which if you look at history, there are various several different narrations uh, mentioned in the books of history by different historians. Uh, but I think, as far as I have seen it, the consensus of the ulama, of the scholars, is that there was a person named Abu Thumama. Abu, Abu Thumama, Thumama uh -huh. was the companion of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And he was present in the plains of Karbala alongside with Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He's the one who actually reminded everyone, of course the Imam knew about it, but he reminded everyone of the prayer time uh -huh. and he was somebody who took prayers very seriously and he knew how prayers become the foundation of Islam. In terms of Adhan, as much as I looked, the call to prayers, it's not mushakhas, it's not clear, it's not evident who was that person who gave the Adhan on I, I the plains of I suppose this Karbala. is an important question for certain people because they want to know precisely what happened right at that moment, you know, the uh, 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 on the Ashura day, at Zohar time, who is it that gave the Adhan and who gave the Adhan? But it, you're saying it's not clear. For the Azan part, yes, I was not able to find who that person was. Right. But we did say like who um, actually reminded everyone of the of the Namaz and you know, he basically invited everyone towards this and, and gave a Tazakur. It's not like others forgot, but he just brought it up, you know how you would just mention something, the, so people get yeah. attracted. And then Azan, it's not clear. There are different narrations. It's hard to say like which one is correct. You gotta understand and take into context the situation there, right? right. You're in a war zone, you're a battle zone, right? People are fighting, there are arrows from every side. There are like spears coming in. There are like horses. Uh, it's dust, it's a desert that you are in. You don't have water to drink. So Three all, days of of these things, yeah. all of these things, you know, the minor details, even if I were to ask you how many people are, are present in this, in this building, you have seen pretty much all of them, but you can't really easily give me a count, right? Yeah. It's not that easy of a thing, although you're sitting in your comfort zone, you're not, you know, it's not a battle or anything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you gotta take into consideration, whenever you question historic events, take uh, into consideration the context of it. And a lot of times, you know, people, um, I talk to people sometimes and they're very unreasonable and sometimes even unjust that, you know, how is it possible that we don't have this piece of information? Well, you got to look at the, that time, you know, you right. didn't have like these hard drives and computers and satellites and, you know, places where you could store stuff and, you know, it's a desert in the middle of a desert with women and kids and, and that too, like people who knew about these things, they were martyred. Sheikh, I have to admit, I've had this, the very same sentiments. I've been like, you know, how can we not know this information? This is, this should have been so obvious. Right. Um, not about this particular question, but about other incidents that occurred. There is a lot of obscurity when it comes to history. Yes. Especially our history. Especially and when it comes to Karbala. Because especially when it comes to the Karbala. men were martyred, right? Imam Sajjad salam was ill at that time. So the stuff that we have from him that he witnessed, it's preserved, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. What Hazrat Zainab Salamu Alaihi have witnessed, that's preserved. But you gotta take into consideration all of those comrades of Imam Hussein Alaihi Salam who were on the front line. The army of Imam Hussein Alaihi Salam, very precise army of Imam Hussein Alaihi Salam. Hmm. They were all martyred, right? It was only the women and the children and just a, uh, a, a few men hmm. to say the least Imam Sajjad Alaihi Salam was the only one surviving, or Imam Bakr salam, was a kid. I, I believe it was Imam Sayyid Ali Khamenei who said that um, had it not been for Sayyid Zainab, the history of Karbala would have been exactly. buried under the sands. Exactly, and this goes actually with the with the question of why did Imam Hussain salam, take women and children with him? And we'll talk about it. But, you know, I think more important is 
how you approach Karbala. Sometimes people approach Karbala in a very um, dry manner, in a very hardcore factual manner, mm -hmm. right? And that sometimes I've seen people, especially historians, they're, they're making it a do or die situation, you know, that this person gave the azan or this person gave the azan, right? Whereas it's not really that important. If you look at the essence of it, right? If you look at the essence of the whole event of Karbala, why Imam Hussain went to Karbala, what was the uprising against and what was it all about and what did he give his life for and his companions were accompanying him, what for? I think this question gets very overshadowed and I'm not trying to, you know, uh, downplay that we shouldn't ask questions. No, it's okay. Right. But I think the spirit of Karbala has to be understood. And the it, philosophy of Karbala it, has to be understood. It's so much more than that, right? Sheikh, if right. you could just hold that thought, we're going to just go to a sure. quick break. Sure. Dear viewers, we'll see you in a moment. This is Karbala. In every corner you look, you'll see people whispering, crying, and releasing their pain into the embrace of their master's love. The master of this abode knows their pain and its solution. A single glance to his shrine can calm the hearts down. And then there are those who are seeking help from Imam Hussein's loyal companions, knowing that there is a great distance between us to them. But that doesn't mean these unparalleled men were born perfect from angels. So how can a person spread into the high skies of humanity and have their lives accepted by Allah as sacrifice? How can they gain the high reputation of becoming the companions to Allah's greatest creation? Perhaps it was from the moment that you put yourself in God's hands and let Him guide you and determine all your decisions. Then you will not doubt what's wrong and what's right, and you won't be able to even think about abandoning your Imam. Once you stand aside and let God take control, you will see that He will let you profit from your life just like those who traded this world for the chance to spend eternity with God's noble servants. I am a trade where they will accept your life for a thousand times if it's worth. Imam Hussein's companion was right to one give his life for him a thousand times over. And we too are right to look upon their graves and wish to have been with them, and thus reached salvation. Dear viewers, welcome back to the show. Sheikhna, we were discussing about how some people uh, focus their attention mm, quite a lot on the historical events and our history is obscure. Uh, to which extent, I'd like to ask, should we um, discuss uh, the history of Karbala in a scientific way and to which extent should we talk about it passionately? Well, I think it depends. It depends on the types of people. Some people, they have an intrinsic interest into history. Other people, they have just intrinsic interest or inclination towards philosophy of something, right? Uh, there are different people, and it's okay for different people to focus on different areas right. without ignoring the other area completely and altogether. Okay. Uh, that said, the way I look at it, the philosophy and the message of Karbala and the reasons behind why it happened on the plains of Karbala, they are far more important than any other historical account, like how many people or what gender 
and Absolutely, you know yeah. how many horses how many camels you know those things i'm not saying that they may not be important in some contexts they would be important but to be honest like this is not something that would take you to those higher levels of understanding of the movement of the Ahlul Bayt. Yeah, right? I, I have to agree with that, Sheikh. Yeah. What, what matters the most is you understand why Ahlul Bayt, salam, they made a certain decision. What were the factors, right? What, what, what was the, what was the uh, you can say, the, the background of an event that took place rather than the minor details of that event, mm. so to speak, right? Many people will get hung up on the minor details. Right. It reminds me of those verses in Surah Kahf where um, you know, Allah tells us that some people say that there were five in the cave and the sixth of them was the dog and some people say that there was sixth in the cave and there was seventh of them was the dog and some people say there were seven and the eighth of them was the dog. And Allah says, you know, just relax. Yeah. There were people in a cave and there was also a dog there. You don't need to go into these petty details. Right. I remember also that there is this saying that a uh, hundred people dying is a tragedy. A uh, thousand people dying is uh, a statistic. Have you ever heard something similar to this? Um, yeah, but elaborate, like, what do you have in what mind? With, I, what, what I wanted to go, <laughs> in which direction I'm going, right? Um, basically, when we isolate the passion behind the whole tragic event of Karbala, and we zoom in on these tiny little details, and we try to dissect exactly precisely what happened, I'm not saying not to, just as you just said, some, it is the job of some historians. But when we look at Karbala in that way, sometimes it can divorce the true core message of it from the, the, the incident that actually happened and the, the passion that it invokes. Right. And, and, and this is where like, it's important to look at the sermons of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein himself. What did Imam Hussein al-Islam talk about? Did he really start to mention the numbers and the minor details of the lands and plains of Karbala and how many, how many again, horses and swords and no, there was no count, so to speak, done by Imam Hussain alayhi salam, and he didn't make them the real mm. issue. If you look at throughout the journey of Imam Hussain alayhi salam up until he reached Karbala, and even after reaching Karbala, Imam Hussain alayhi salam delivering these sermons to the forces of the enemy and trying to rectify them, trying to help them get out of this uh, state where they, can, they, get, they keep getting close to hell, and hellfire, right. Imam Hussain alayhi salam talks about those concepts, those key concepts mm -hmm. that can help them survive. It was not so much about the statistics, it was not so much about, for instance, the date. What date is it today? You know, we know the 10th of Muharram, but sometimes, you know, in historic events, if you look at the Wilada and Shahada, Shahada of right. Imams, you know, right. people spend their lives just figuring out the dates. While I'm not saying that it does not have any benefit, but really I would want to question with all due respect and humbly, how much benefit does it have? You know, right. should we evaluate that? Mm. Are there more important things for us to follow and, and to, to figure out? I think everybody would agree that, yes, there are way more important things about the movement of the Imams themselves, mm. their lives, their seerah, Right? The way they made decisions again, they, the way they thought, the way they approached mm. different scenarios. Those things are more important for us to figure out because they can be a role model for us. We cannot go back in, you know, 1,000 years ago and be on that date. There's no time machine that can take you, at least as of right now. Yeah. Right? Now, when we say this, right, this becomes crystal clear that understanding the movement is of far more importance than Absolutely. getting into these nitty-gritty details. Absolutely, Sheikh. Yeah, there's two ways of looking at Muharram. One is as a historical event, as a story, it's over, it's happened. And one is as a movement. So, and, and there's two types of people, I guess, in the Shia world. Exactly. They will look at it, some of them will look at it as just, you know, a historical event. Exactly. And some will look at it as a movement. Exactly. Now, when you're looking at it as a historical event, that's all it is, really. And then you, you might shed right. a few tears, right. but then you'll move away right. from it. Right. But when you see Karbala as a movement, it's going to take you in a certain direction. And in order to reach the goal of Imam Hussein, you're going to have to analyze what his goals were. It's very and well the, put. See, the thing is, if you look at one of the injustices that was done to the movement of Imam Hussein salam, and to this divine movement, which is not just uh, starting with Imam Hussein, it actually started with the prophets of Allah, 
right? The first messenger, the first prophet, Hazrat Adam, he started it, right? From there on, it continued, right? right? It reached Imam Hussain alayhi salam, and by the way, it still continues, and it's going to reach Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, who's the Imam of our time, right? This movement, one of the injustices, prime injustices done to this movement and the sacrifice is that we got into those nitty-gritty historic details mm. and based on those details we unfortunately even in some cases started to create disunity amongst the ummah. Mm -hmm. You're fighting over petty issues not knowing that okay imam's cause and imam message is far more important than the number of horses on the plains of Karbala. Would the wedding of Hajat Qasim be a good example of this? Well, one of the one of the good examples, although these are the fabrications that crawled in and creeped in very later uh, in the history, in the historic time frame. But if you were to look at the right after Karbala, you know, the, the books that were written and the scholars that came, uh, many of them did not take an ideological approach to understand Karbala. Uh -huh. They just got into the historic aspect of Karbala which is of importance in its own place. We're not denying the importance of it. But they started to glorify Imam Hussain alayhi salam rather than glorifying Imam Hussain alayhi salam with his movement and with the purpose and the continuation of that movement. That piece was missing. And again, it's not that everybody took that approach, but majority of the Muslim Ummah, unfortunately, and this is where you see that sometimes Shias and Sunnis yeah they disagree regarding Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Well, let me ask you a question, both Shias and Sunnis. Is Imam Hussain alayhi salam not the grandson of your prophet? Allah, right. And you're not ready and that. able to deny that Karbala happened. That's the real so question. So this is yeah. the uniting factor. Why do you want to quarrel about the very minor details, right? Or how to commemorate his mm. martyrdom or how to remember him? No, these are the things that we need to, as an ummah, take Inshallah. much more seriously. Inshallah. Dear viewers, we hope that you enjoyed the show today. We'd like to leave you with just one question. Do you view uh, Karbala as a historical event, a story, or do you view it as a movement? Sheikh, it's been a, a real pleasure to have you in the show today. Thank you for having me. Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.